Breaking news out of the big Sunday morning. The Red Sox have made their first significant move of the offseason, agreeing to a deal with free agent shortstop Trevor Story, this confirmed by our Jim Bowden. The Yankees and Astros were also in the running to sign the two-time All-Star. Previously played with the Rockies, Story will move to second base with Xander Bogarts playing shortstop already for Boston. That confirmed by our Jim Bowden as well. The 29-year-old Story hit 251 for Colorado last season with 24 home runs and 75 RBI. And for more on the matter, we bring in CBS MLB analyst and our Red Sox world champion, Will Middlebrooks. Uh, will, anytime we get Beantown news, we need it from all angles here. Fan perspective, inside the clubhouse, your reaction to this news is what? I love it. You know, there's been a lot of turmoil within Red Sox Nation because they haven't made that big splash. They brought in some some bullpen arms, which I thought were really good additions to the team, but not that big splash, not that big right-handed power bat they've been looking for. Well, they got him now. They got him now. This is a big bat, and it gives you depth in the infield. He's going to play second base. Xander Bogart's going to stay at short. He has he has, There's a chance he opts out after this season. He said he wants to stay in Boston, but I think he wants to – be able to restructure that contract, make a little more money since he's that all-star player at shortstop. Now, what does that mean for the future of Trevor Story? Maybe he falls in love with second base. We know there's been some elbow issues there the past couple seasons. There's some rumors that there's a slight tear in the UCL that could eventually tear and need Tommy John. No one really knows, no one has that crystal ball. But second base is gonna be much less stress on that arm. He's not gonna be going deep for a backhand in the six hole and making that long throw. The longest throw he's gonna make is from second base turning a double play from Xander Bogart. Uh, when you look at this deal, it, it obviously is a bump for Boston in all angles, but you've been in direct contact with Trevor throughout this process. Can you give us a peek behind the curtain into what this last week or so was like for him, what he was mulling over and ultimately coming to a deal with Boston? Yeah, so everything we saw on social media, in, in the media, about all these teams that have been in contact and all these th it's all absolutely true. He, he really didn't have a great idea until last night and, and early this morning that this was going to happen. Uh, I was obviously, as a Sox guy, selling Boston to him, <laughs> explaining how New York smells like garbage. They have rats the size of Shetland ponies. Uh, Houston has hurricanes. You don't want to get out of California because of this, the income tax. Uh, and Boston was just the best place to play uh, because I experienced it firsthand. So I've been selling it. Trevor's a kid that, that I've been in touch with, uh, that I've been buddies with for a long time. We used to work out in the off-seasons together in Dallas, and he's a good, good guy. He's going to be perfect for that clubhouse in that city. Well, the sales pitch lands in Boston. Our Will Middlebrooks getting the job done for the Beantown Bashers. But uh, as we know in Boston, all sports, but specifically in baseball, a lot of it is about fit. The guy in the city, the player in the ballpark. How do you like this fit? Love it. Blue collar, hard worker. He loves the pressure to win. That's what he was missing in Colorado. That's why he wanted out of there. Uh, there was they made not they made much of an effort to bring him back. That's why the whole Chris Bryant signing kind of blew everyone away, thinking this makes zero sense because there's no sense of urgency to win ball games out there in Colorado. So he's excited to go somewhere where they want to win every single day, where they're bringing in players to win, uh, where the fans give you that pressure to win. I mean, you're going to walk down the street in Boston. Everybody you pass is going to know who you are, who your family is, your history, the back of your baseball card. They're going to ask you why you swung at that slider in the dirt last night. That's just who they are because they want to win nonstop and he will thrive off of that there. Uh, I want to double back on something we were talking about earlier. Our colleague Jim Bowden leading the reporting that he will move to second base. You talked about sort of how that's going to alleviate things on that arm that he could be having issues with. But what are some of the pressure points he's going to deal with in that transition? Yeah, I think, you know, I, I, I've played third base. I've played shortstop. I've played second. The hardest thing is everything is just backwards when you go over there. The ball tails differently. The, the pop-ups look different. Uh, just looking at home plate looks different because everything is flipped. So it will, that, that, that's something to pay attention to because this is gonna be, it was already a short spring training. And now for Trevor Story, it's gonna be about a two week spring training. So he's gonna have to get a lot of work in quick. He is one of the most athletic human beings, if not the most athletic human being I've ever been around. So I think he'll be able to make that transition pretty flawlessly. Uh, so I'm not worried about that in that aspect. And another thing, they know there's going to be a learning curve. And as Dustin Pedroia used to tell me, 
just knock in more than you let in, kid. That's all that matters. So he'll, he'll put some dents in that monster, and, and everybody will forget about an error here. Yeah, uh, he'll make quick friends there in Boston. We do have some reported uh, deal notes here. Six years, $140 million contract. In your estimation, is this what you expected in terms of a deal number-wise? It's exactly what I thought. I mean, I thought that was what he was looking for from the beginning. It was going to take a big market team like this to get that done. Um, and there's still a possibility he ends up being a shortstop. I think they want to go through a year, fully rehab that elbow as the season, you know, not, not take time off, but rehab it, give it some extra love throughout the season, make sure it gets better and better and better and, not, and doesn't uh, digress during the, during the season. And then if Xander Bogarts happens to opt out and test free agency and get picked up by another team, which no one wants, but that's a reality in, in baseball nowadays is, is there's a lot of turnover on teams. So that's a safety blanket moving forward for the Red Sox, knowing they have an all-star caliber second baseman who can play shortstop as well. Uh, we have to look at this in terms of the division and the arms race that is a lot of activity, a lot of big names in the division. We know Toronto, they're young, hungry. They add a gold glover in Chapman. Uh, here we see Story go to Boston. When you look at this deal through the lens of the inactivity of the Yankees right now, what short, sort of plates are shifting within the division? Yeah, I think Boston, I mean, we know what Boston's going to bring. We knew New York is going to, you know, they're, they're not the New York we believe uh, that they have been the past decade where they're going to go out and spend whatever it takes to, to get the job done, to, to get the superstars on their roster. But like you said, Toronto is that team that has really, they, they, they developed, they draft and developed all these superstar players. They're under team control for a couple more years. Uh, and then, like you said, they bring in the gold, the gold glover. They go out and get pitching. The Blue Jays are going to be a problem. And, and I think the uh, AL East, along with the NL West, are going to be two of the most exciting divisions in baseball. I think we're going to take a look right now at the odds to win that division. Uh, we'll see where the sprinkle is. We know our guy, Will Middlebrooks, always going to be on the Bow Sox. And there's some value to be had there at plus 525. The Blue Jays, who we just spoke about, your odds on favorites here at 2-1. to one. Yankees equal odds right there, but you are paying for a brand name. I mean, I'd ask you where your money's going, Will, but let's not ask questions that we already have answers to, right? I mean, how much do we love that 525 right there? I love it, but a lot of that hangs on Chris Sale. How long is he going to be out with the stress fracture in his ribs? Do the Sox go out and get another starting pitcher uh, today or tomorrow, hopefully to, to add to that depth? Are they going to have Michael Waka step up, who they signed, to be able to make some starts? Tanner Houck? Uh, Garrett Whitlock, two guys who were kind of long guys in the bullpen. I think we're going to see them make some starts as well. So the first month is going to be really telling for, for the Red Sox pitching staff, the depth they have. I think the lineup's going to be fine, and they're going to score a lot of runs. I see them making a uh, – honestly, fighting for the top of the division. That's not just a homer pick. I think they have the talent to do so. Well, it'll also be a new trap chapter uh, in the story, and it's going to be a good one. We always appreciate you taking the time. Even on a vacation, our guy Will Middlebrooks weighing in when it comes to the Red Sox. And here's a look at the odds to win the AL. Uh, Astros, despite losing their star in Carlos Correa a day ago, still your favorites at plus 450, followed their blood by the Blue Jays. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.